Oh, very good morning to all of the uh, prominent you know, respectable attendees. Uh, my name is Mohammed Asif. Uh, I drive Bulwark Technologies Business for Saudi Arabia, uh, stationed at Riyadh. Today, uh, the, the uh, whole uh, idea of having this webinar is to give the uh, you know, light on how to work through disruption. Uh, with Mimecast, uh, you know, just wanted to give you a brief agenda before starting how we are going forward for this uh, webinar. So uh, as I introduce you myself, we have along with us, uh, you know, the solution vendor that is Mimecast. Uh, I have uh, Mr. Sean Levi and I have Mr. Uh, Man Fatouni, uh, who is from Saudi itself. So yeah, these two guys will be presenting uh, Mimecast solution. Uh, this is a joint event with the prominent, you know, and preferred partner called Binzuma. So Binzuma is also there in the call. So just wanted to give you a brief that how we move forward. So, the, so the, 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 the agenda would be, we would be talking about the key security consideration for navigating the current threat landscape. Uh, we all know that we are being suffering for uh, from pandemic these days, the corona and all. So there, obviously, when the pandemic is going about to end, there would be a post-pandemic environment, especially in the Gulf. And definitely it comes with a lot of uh, threats to returning to work. Then we'll be discussing about a layered approach to cyber resilience. And then we will be providing you a time for your questions, queries, and uh, Mimecast, Team Mimecast and Bulwark would be, uh, you know, happy to uh, answer that queries. So just wanted to start who we are as a Bulwark. So uh, I am uh, from Bulwark Technologies. Uh, Bulwark is a value-added distributor for information security solutions. Uh, we are working in this Middle East for almost 20 plus years. Now we are all, uh, you know, also having uh, presence there in India. We have a local presence in Saudi Arabia also. We have uh, resources there in Riyadh and Jeddah, uh, sales and technical resources. So Bulwark has been established in 1999 uh, with a headquarter in Dubai. We uh, established our offices there in India in 2017. Bulwark is um, operating with almost 22 technology vendors who are, uh, you know, the, the technology and the solutions are always, uh, already there, well accepted in the market. These are the proven technologies. And as uh, a distributor, we are working through the channel partners, which is extended arms for us. So I, as a Bulwark, having more than seven, 700 plus uh, business channel partners in Middle East and India. So why Bulwark? So Bulwark is an established and an excellent track record in delivering world-class products. So when I say world-class product means before signing with any vendor or before shaking hand with any vendor, we you know do a lot of analysis that what about the technology, how the solutions are, what is the acceptability there in the market, you know, and uh, we have uh, tied up with only the proven technology solution uh, vendors across uh, the GCC. So Bulwark partners, you know, with the best of breed technologies, we have been partnered with, uh, you know, uh, with a lot of uh, channel partners who are already well-established name, name in the market. We are offering, you know, since we have a proven technology vendors, we are offering winning products with the, with the satisfaction of the customers. So I'll not take you much time. We have a dedicated, uh, dedicated sales team. We have a dedicated marketing team, certified technical professionals uh, across, you know, um, solution, cybersecurity solution space. Question answers, I'll come to you later. I will not take your much time. I will hand over to, uh, you know, directly jump into the technology session that is through Mimecast. So I will hand over to uh, Sean to present uh, his part. All right. Um, so good morning, everybody. Uh, so for those of you that um, don't know me, my name is Sean. I am the commercial sales manager at Mimecast. Um, I've been with Mimecast for almost seven years now. Um, for those that do know me, um, it's good to see you see you again. Unfortunately, you can't see the faces, um, but I'm sure we will get that opportunity very soon. Cool. So I think um, I'm going to take us through two different presentations. Um, we'll split it. So I'll take you through a first couple slides. I'll hand over to Mon, um, and then I will then introduce you to Security 3.0. Now. Just before I kick off, um, I, I want to kind of talk about some of the statistics, uh, some of the stuff that we're seeing um, in the market, where we've come from last year, this year, um, and how things have evolved. Uh, now, when I talk about Security 3.0, what I'm referring to is a bundle of solutions that are specifically designed to combat the challenges that, that many organizations, many of you guys on the call today, 
uh, face. Now, since coming to the UAE almost four years ago, um, I've dealt with hundreds of different organizations. Now, what's amazing to see is when I look back um, is how the security problem has evolved. Now, the requirement, that doesn't change. They just become a lot more complex and require a much more inclusive solution. You know, to give you an example, last week I had a meeting with a large retail company with a very large online presence, um, and they were facing challenges with brand impersonation attacks, uh, specifically taking advantage of their COVID messaging to their customers. Now, that same day, I had a meeting with another customer, you know, and um, this customer was, um, uh, they were facing challenges protecting their suppliers from emails that looked like they were coming from them. Um, however, these emails obviously had fake invoices, fake payment information related to discounts that they were providing their customers for early payment um, due to COVID. You know, uh, everybody is obviously suffering. Uh, people still want to get paid. However, there's very little um, spending power. Now, one thing that's constant is email. And nearly all cyber attacks leverage email. There's, there's many reasons why. Uh, just to name a few, email is always on. It's our number one business application. It's our primary form of communication. It's on 24-7, 365. Now, another reason is that it's also a trusted form of communication. Okay, So we obviously always um, uh, communicate over email. It could be in our business capacity. It could be in a private capacity. Um, but we do use email as our number one tool for communication. It can also carry links, it can carry attachments, it can be impersonated. It is very quick and easy for an attacker to put something together, and it's also very cheap for them to deploy. Now, before I was with Mimecast, I was with a penetration penetration uh, sorry penetration testing company. Um, and what we did from a pen testing point of view is uh, banks, uh, retail companies, you know, very large businesses would hire us to do penetration testing. And effectively, uh, we would quote them based on the amount of time that we think that it would take us to get through to their, ultimately get roots or to get access to their infrastructure. Um, obviously, based on budgets, they would allocate a certain amount of time and say they can only afford a week or two weeks or whatever the case is. Now, back, I'm talking 10 years ago, um, it was really, it was really a, an intensive exercise for an attacker to try and get access to the network because you were trying to break uh, million dollar infrastructure. Uh, became very costly, became very time uh, consuming. Um, and obviously this changed and uh, we saw email becoming the number one attack vector because it was very quick and very cheap to deploy any sort of attack. Now this does make email a very effective tool for bad actors. Now, some of the intentions behind these attacks would be to gain control over IT assets, um, gain access and steal data or money, and disrupt business operations. Now, year on year, the world is seeing an increase in various types of attacks. I mean, I say year on year, but this is day every single day. These things are changing. Uh, this comes from uh, one of our reports uh, that we release every quarter. This is one of our threat intelligence reports or our uh, cybercrime reports. Um, and what this shows is that if you look on the top right, a staggering 94% of organizations admitted to experiencing efficient attacks. Now, this is a, a, a very large amount. I mean, this is nine out of 10 people on the call today or 9.4 out of 10 people on the call today admit to seeing an efficient attack, but I can guarantee the other 6% are in denial. They just don't want to admit it. Everybody has experienced some sort of efficient attack. Obviously, from an organization point of view, these are happening all the time, but also in your personal capacity. I mean, if you check any of your uh, free mail services, there are hundreds of different attacks that are um, maybe landing up at spam or even getting delivered. Now, on average, Mimecast is blocking around 22 billion threats every month. This is across almost 40,000 customers across the globe. And if you look at the top there, 61%, these are the number of organizations that believe that suffering a negative business impact from an email born attack is either likely or it's inevitable. It's going to happen, right? 61% um, of organizations admit to that. Again, the other 39% uh, probably aren't prepared. 
Uh, this is a, um, a screenshot from our quarterly threat intelligence report. Now, what I've done is I've taken uh, the same quarter last year. Obviously, the threat landscape has, has evolved dramatically. I'm actually waiting for the new uh, one for this quarter so we can compare it. But in this, you can see um, that we look at four primary categories of attacks. So if you look at the bottom, left to right, spam, impersonation attacks, phishing and spear phishing, or opportunistic and targeted attacks. Now you can see that in the graph, um, there are small peaks, there's small valleys, but it's quite constant. So now maybe with the exception of the end of December, now we're heading into that, um, into this, uh, uh, into, the, into the December month now, things are going to quieten down, people go and leave, um, but the attackers also go and leave. Now remember the attackers are people too, and they also take holidays. So that's why we see a decrease in the amount of attacks generally in the last week of December. Um, it's a combination of users going on leave and combination of attackers also having downtime. But now keep in mind that attackers also have peak times. So the COVID pandemic is a perfect example. Now with all the news links, the apps that are floating around, it's very easy for somebody to be tricked to click on something that's not legitimate. Um, you know, every day, almost all the time, there's new news coming out. There's new borders that are being opened. There's new flights. Uh, people are desperate to go and see their families. They want to travel. Um, so they're always looking out for, for the latest news. Um, we saw an increase in the amount of tax that we were going around uh, when uh, Pfizer said that they had a vaccine that was 90% effective. And then Moderna came out to say that they have a vaccine that's 94% effective and now AstraZeneca as well. All this news that's going that's going around is making people a little more desperate um, to to travel, to go out thinking that it's safe, clicking on links, open up attachments and that type of stuff. That's a perfect, perfect opportunity for attackers. Now in this graph you can see that there is a day in October where there there's more volume than any other day. Now, that particular day, there was around, we detected around 5,130,000 threats. Now, this is an average of 150 attacks per company on a single day. That is significant. Now, remember, it only takes one attack for, your, um, for any business to be compromised. And that compromise can be anything from something, uh, as I mentioned, disruptive. It could be something that's even crippling. So um, exploiting the brand, losing money whatever it is, direct or indirect financial losses. Now, your IT, the security, the business people need to start thinking differently, need to start working together to tackle these security challenges. Um, as I mentioned, they can have crippling consequences of the business. Now, email security uh, does need a, a new, more inclusive type of approach. Now, uh, again, if, if I spoke about what it looked like 10 years ago. Um, I'm even going to talk about what it looked like uh, six years ago. Now, things used to be a lot easier. Now, the email security has typically been provided by a secure email gateway. This is your classic email perimeter strategy. This is to keep bad emails from making their way to good organizations. Now, if we look at the evolution of these types of attacks, we obviously uh, started with spam, spam and viruses. Your gateway has become a lot smarter. Um, any sort of appliance, gateway, software, hardware, um, it's very easy to detect spam and viruses today. But the attackers are always one step ahead of us. Um, and that's where we see the introduction of things like phishing, spear phishing, and impersonation or social engineering attacks where are typically malwareless or they're not considered spam or a virus when they come to the gateway. So the perimeter has evolved. Also, the changes in the threat landscape and the way that we work require that the strategy must extend beyond your traditional perimeter defense to a more inclusive um, email security strategy. It's got to be more pervasive and more complementary of the overall security system. Um, we, we, these are just some examples. You have your people, your places, and your things, especially now, a lot of companies, and Mimecast has embarked on it as well. Uh, we have a work from anywhere policy. It's not just a work from home policy. So people are becoming uh, a lot more complacent. You're able to work from anywhere in the world these days. Um, a lot of your users aren't necessarily sitting in the organization or in the network. 
also your your uh, internet of things or your devices is allowing you to work from anywhere using a multiple different array of devices as well that you don't necessarily have visibility or control of. Okay. Um, and with that, I'm going to hand over to Mon, um, and then we'll come back to me for an introduction into our email security 3.0 framework. Thanks for everyone who joined today. Uh, happy to see uh, so many faces, some some that I know personally. Uh, my name is Man Ftouni. I'm the uh, country manager for uh, Mimecast Saudi Arabia. And uh, today I'm going to be talking to you uh, about the post-pandemic world and uh, how COVID uh, impacted the threat landscape and uh, how organizations are coping with these changes, um, which, which leads us basically to what can be done um, in, in this ever-changing world that we are living in. So uh, to do this, I'm, I'm going to be sharing some key slides from our State of Email Security Report 2020, which has a lot of data actually gathered from Saudi Arabia and the UAE. So it's, it's mostly local data and it's extremely relevant to you. And this is why I wanted to share it. The, the report, of course, you, 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 you can find it uh, uh, published on our website or if you, if you need, I can. I can send it over to uh, to you by email. It's it's a lengthy report. I'm going to take snippets of it, and um, we'll we'll go through it together. So, of course, we know by now, and as Sean has uh, vividly explained, email is still the most popular attack vector, basically, especially with the uh, with the uh, diversity. That we're seeing and uh, of, of the interconnected systems, uh, especially after COVID. So what what happened? What happened basically after COVID is that a lot of companies were forced to work remotely, and that caused these companies to change rapidly their policies and devise new systems that were not there, and definitely this caused gaps for companies around the globe. And not that it wasn't complex before, but the complexity has increased and it's always gonna increase as new technologies uh, are being introduced, uh, like IoT and working from home and bring your own devices and all this, that, kind of, that stuff that, that really uh, puts a stress on the uh, infrastructures as we know it. So these uh, remote working policies were really not uh, not thought of uh, thoroughly in some cases because they were devised quickly to to accommodate the changes caused by the COVID nineteen uh, pandemic. Uh, a lot of countries went into lockdown rapidly around the globe, and companies didn't have time really to plan uh, these things basically. So. Our report will show some of the impacts uh, that working remotely has caused some companies, how the threats have increased, and the relevance of email and web security in today's uh, cyber uh, attack world. I want to share some findings here you might be, that you might find interesting. So in the past 12 months, 51% have been impacted by ransomware. But I want to remind you that a lot of this data is actually from Saudi Arabia and the UAE. So uh, the, 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 the numbers for the region are not really that different. Um, I don't know if you can do this on this call, but if you can, uh, if you can type in the chat, has any of you seen in your organizations an increase in ransomware attacks uh, in the past 12 months. I would like really to, to, to know your feedback about this. 31% uh, of companies, they have experienced data loss due to cyber resilience preparedness, um, impersonation fraud, 60% said they have experienced an increase in impersonation fraud in the last year alone. 
and 82% have experienced downtime from an attack. Now, this is a very, very big number, 82%. Uh, of the people who uh, were part of the survey have experienced a downtime. And the downtime usually of a ransomware takes a long time. So uh, the financial loss probably is in millions uh, in, 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 in some cases. So I can tell you from my experience here in Saudi Arabia that we have seen a big uptick in ransomware attacks in impersonation frauds, and even recently, like last week, we've seen a huge uptick or a huge phishing campaign actually targeting the banking sector and the utility sector in Saudi Arabia. I'm pretty sure a lot of you have seen this uh, phishing campaign. So the attacks have increased, and um, we can see now in the report that Saudi Arabia and the UAE are, are, are two of the country the countries that are most affected by the global phishing uh, and attack campaigns, basically. The report also tells us that 74% of Saudi Arabian businesses believe it's in inevitable or likely they will suffer negative outcomes of an email-borne attack. So Sean mentioned some info about the email attack vector. It's still the most relevant. So between email and web, you have like 98 or 99% of the attacks originate that way, with, with 90% or 92% coming from, depending on which report you follow. So that's really a, a, a big number. And uh, that begs a question, basically, are companies really investing uh, on email security uh, enough to stop these attacks? When we say 92% of attacks originate from the e that means there should be an uh, investment amount from the cybersecurity budget that matches this. And this is where we see a lot of companies struggling um, in Saudi and outside of Saudi, especially with the complexity we're seeing uh, and, the, uh, and the cost of implementing the latest technologies Companies are struggling to find the appropriate budgets to keep up with the with the with the with the new complex attacks with the with the attack landscape that we're seeing. So the ransomware is is one of the key things we've seen in Saudi Arabia, and uh, I can tell you that this number here, three days of downtime on average when hit with a ransomware attack, is actually really an average. Uh, I personally uh, have seen two customers here in Saudi Arabia that have been hit in, with, with ransom. And uh, the impact was really uh, uh, enormous uh, financially uh, on, the, on, the, on the service itself, on the brand. And uh, both entities were done for more than a week until they were able to restore the service and the data. So restoring data is really a struggle, especially when you have a, a complex uh, infrastructure between an on-prem uh, uh, data center and a cloud data center, and you're backing up your data uh, on a NAS and a SAN, and um, you're having paid drives and, and probably an online archive. That, that, that complexity really leads to uh, an impact in, in the way you restore the data after a ransomware attack. Uh, and uh, we, we've seen this live this year in Saudi Arabia uh, with, with customers we are working with, and we help them basically in, uh, in, in restoring their services. But uh, basically the, the, the post-pandemic world has, has caused a rise in these attacks the ransomware attacks. We have seen that across the globe. So the attack aftermath really is, is um, you could say, uh, in addition to the financial impact, you have the impact on the employee productivity, business interruption, um, and of course the brand itself, the impact on the brand, which cannot be really measured financially. Uh, there is no tools really to measure the impact financially on the brand. So 
a lot of companies basically have invested in a solution or a system to monitor and protect against email borne attacks or data leaks, basically. In the UAE, it seems that uh, companies are really investing a lot uh, on that front. So 90% of the organization surveyed, they already have a system to monitor against email borne attacks or are in the process of implementing one, which is really, really very high and impressive. Basically, it's, it's, uh, it's higher than country, some countries in, in, in Europe. So, the report really highlights the impact of the uh, uh, brand, brand attacks that we're seeing. So, when, when we talk about phishing attacks or when you see uh, phishing campaigns originating from known banks that you deal with every day or, or utility companies you work with or hospitals, it definitely impacts the brand itself. And if you are basically, uh, if you are working in, in one of the entities that uh, uh, are, are having these phishing campaigns, uh, you, you really feel helpless because these campaigns originate from somewhere outside your control. Basically, and they keep popping up, and uh, your customers are impacted directly. It could be an, a financial impact, like the la latest phishing campaign in Saudi. Uh, we've seen the uh, impersonators trying to gather personal information uh, from the customers of these banks, and even if you follow the the links they have provided, they ask for uh, the Visa card information. Uh, at the end of the uh, uh, basically form that they ask the customers to submit. And this is uh, basically a, a personal information update form. This is how they uh, put it. So uh, I'm not sure how many people fell for this phishing campaign, but I'm, I'm definite that there's a considerable percentage of people that fell for it. And the attackers probably have gathered already these Visa card numbers and they have already probably uh, caused a considerable financial impact on the entities themselves. So uh, brand protection is really, and brand trust is really, uh, uh, is really uh, now showing after the uh, pandemic. Uh, it, it has come to the forefront. Probably the, 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 the pandemic has helped cause that, I would say. In addition to, uh, uh, email spoofing, domain spoofing, and brand uh, brand attacks. Uh, these things really um, are impacting the global business environment. So, I want to show you this slide, and this is really an impressive slide because you can see here that Saudi Arabia and the UAE, they're one of the countries really most impacted by email spoofing attacks. They are close to the United States, close to the United Kingdom, higher than uh, Germany. And uh, we're seeing an, an uptick in these attacks actually in Saudi Arabia and the UAE. And this has been happening uh, pre-COVID and COVID has caused an acceleration in these attacks. And I would say last week, uh, it, it I've, I've never seen something like this, but last week, the, the, the campaigns that we've seen targeting entities and customers here in Saudi Arabia were, were out of this world, really. Uh, it, it, it's obvious that this is uh, a, an organized group or several organized groups that have done this. And uh, uh, basically, uh, we, we will hear more about the impact of these attacks in the, in the next few weeks. So what are the takeaways uh, to finish this presentation? What are the takeaways we, we can take from, from this report? So business leaders are beginning to understand the email perimeter uh, is constantly under attack. So uh, whether it's an IT leader or a business leader, definitely if you're a CEO or a CFO uh, or someone who's not in the IT world, you are seeing these attacks on a daily basis, whether it's on your personal hotmail or Gmail email or on your business. Uh, 
uh, the, the, the the trend is rising. Uh, people are seeing these attacks firsthand, and companies are being impacted um, on a on a daily and weekly basis. And the rise is really concerning. So uh, uh, we've we've never seen this in the region uh, with this aggressive behavior. So now we, we're seeing a huge rise in these attacks. And uh, the constant that we're seeing is that the impact of ransomwares are. When we say average three days, it has been average three days in 2018, 2019, 2020, which means that the readiness of organizations is not improving. And this is where the cyber resilience readiness comes to play here. And this is why it's important to have a cyber resilience, uh, cyber resilient infrastructure where you can uh, protect yourself from, from attacks, evolving attacks at a minimal cost, and make sure that the business services are up and running during an attack, and be able to recover quickly after an attack. So the word quickly is very important here, because if you can recover your data, but it takes one month, then the damage has happened, even if you have the data. So it's very important that you are able to keep the business running and you can recover the data in the minimal possible the financial and brand impact uh, on your organization. Security awareness training is really the best way to train employees on not clicking links or not falling for these phishing scams. But really, most of the programs of most organizations we're seeing, they don't have an effective security awareness training strategy or uh, solution. So em employees really treat security awareness training like something that they need to do uh, on a checklist. They really don't focus on the content and uh, it's not giving the de desirable result that, that it's supposed to. So it's no longer enough, like Sean will show you now in the next uh, presentation. It's no longer um, enough to look only uh, at your perimeter, basically, or inside your, uh, your network. This is no longer enough. It's important to protect internally your, your network, make sure that nothing bad comes, comes in your network and nothing bad even leaves your network to other organizations. And I think most companies are mature uh, in that regard. But now you have to go uh, beyond the perimeter and basically see uh, who's using my brand on social media, who's using my brand on uh, and, and, and targeting my customers. Um, because if your customers are impacting, impacted, you are impacted. And this is what we have seen this week, actually. Last week in Saudi Arabia, sorry. Huh. So the last point uh, I want to talk about is basically we are seeing a lot of companies moving to Office 365 and utilizing uh, some security um, features from Office 365. And Microsoft, basically, they have done a great job in, in enhancing their security on, on, on in, in the last few years, I would say. Uh, they, they had a very bad reputation in the 90s and the early um, 2000s, but I would say now they have really an excellent solution. Um, but again, the Office 365 environment is basically the most targeted environment in the world because any attacker can simply create an account and test the malware, the rootkits, or whatever uh, bad act they want to do, they can test it before attacking an organization. And it needs really an enhancement. Uh, Office 365 needs an enhancement in terms of cyber resilience. And uh, they have a lot of good things, but there's a lot of gaps that organizations need to be aware of. And uh, this is what we're seeing in Saudi Arabia. Uh, we have a lot of customers who are using Office 365, but still they cannot uh, stop certain type of attacks uh, or are unable to uh, uh, basically uh, have a complete uh, resilient environment uh, because as we know that there are a lot of uh, outages that happened in Office 365 this year. And uh, basically an outage like an attack will cause financial impact. 
so uh, with this, basically, um, I want to end my presentation. Uh, again, if you can share with us your experience on phishing attacks, what have you seen in the, in, in the past 12 months in Saudi Arabia? Uh, we really value that, that, that type of info. And uh, I would like to basically uh, thank you and uh, hand over to Sean, who's going to talk to you about the uh, Email Security 3.0 and the Mindcast solution uh, framework. Okay. So, Email Security 3.0. Um, now, as I mentioned in my, uh, in my introduction, um, Email Security 3.0 is a framework. Now, this is a Mimecast framework. This is something that Mimecast has developed and that we've gone to market with. Um, and ultimately, what email 3.0, email security 3.0 is, it's our third iteration of security products. Um, security 1.0 was uh, just the perimeter defense. So it's just your antivirus and anti spam gateway. 2.0 included targeted threat protection which is what we've been going to market with since around 2014, 2015. And now Security 3.0 is a, uh, a framework that effectively looks at um, security in three different zones. So a new age problem, uh, which is something that we've, we've obviously got today, uh, which is more predominant, but it's something that we've seen over the past couple of years. It does require a comprehensive email security strategy. This means that we need to move from a perimeter only approach to a more pervasive security measure and to think about this in three different zones. Now, zone one is at your perimeter. Okay, so we've, we've, we've spoke about this. Uh, Mimecast calls this a perimeter defense plan, um, but I'm going to talk about this a little more in depth in the next couple of slides. Zone two is in, inside your network and your organization. And zone three is beyond your perimeter. So now, now what you can see is when we do talk to customers and basically the general public um, about this, we uh, try to do a gap analysis. We try to understand what is it that uh, you are getting today? What is it that Mimecast can provide? And where are the gaps that we can look to fulfill in future? So you can understand um, from a 3.0 framework perspective, are we just focusing on zone one, zone two, zone three, and where are the gaps? Now at Mimecast, we define zone one as your perimeter. So in other words, this is your secure email gateway. Now in a physical world, this is very much like the passport control, which you can see over here. So you travel, you get into the plane, you land in another country. The first thing that's going to happen is that you're gonna go through passport control. This is when they you're going to get uh, analyze for certain data, um, and then that will let you into the country if, uh, if you are safe, right? Another example would be something like your reception. Um, visitors will come to the reception, your reception will then uh, ask a few questions, understand where the visitor wants to go, who they're meeting with, um, basically interrogating the visitors to understand are you allowed into the environment or not. Now, attacks on zone one are relentless. Um, I said this in the beginning, Ron mentioned it as well, but nearly more than 94% of all attacks start with email. The good news is that most of you are aware by now, Mimecast has some of the best technology in the industry. This includes our targeted threat protection to stop targeted attacks and to keep our customers safe. But now we move from your perimeter to inside your perimeter. This is zone two. Now, even with a robust email security perimeter in place, the attackers can still try and bypass the perimeter and operate inside the email network. So we see three different categories of users here. You have the compromised employee account. You have the malicious insider, and you also have the careless insider. This is where those three categories live. Now, they use the organization's email systems to send bad stuff internally as well as out. Now, there are two very important considerations in zone two. The first is obviously having the ability to interrogate internally sent emails. This is the lateral spread. Now, you couple this with having the capability to immediately remove malicious or inappropriate content from the network once it's detected. 
Mimecast has a um, has an add-on to our perimeter defense plan known as internal email protect. Now, what this does is analyzes the, the lateral spread. It looks for malicious links, malicious attachments. It looks for certain content that's been spread internally. And then it provides a remediation where we can automatically remove once detected or users or uh, administrators can manually remove content that they feel users should not um, should not be privy to you or should not have. Um, and since your employees are vulnerable to opening up attachments, clicking on links and falling for scams, the second important consideration is the uh, is a un, uh, user awareness training. Now, we Mindcast obviously has their own user awareness training. Um, this is critical to help turn your employees into allies rather than the weakest links. Now we know that you can have as much, you can spend as much on the infrastructure as possible, you can have a multi-million dollar infrastructure. At the end of the day, the attacker knows that the users are the weakest links. And if they can find the easiest way to get to the user, which could typically be email, and they can trick that user into clicking a link, opening up an attachment, or replying to an email or spreading that email, then your systems could be ultimately compromised. It's important to build up that human firewall, create that user awareness, understand where your riskiest uh, users sit, um, and also to provide efficient simulation to make sure that the users are always on their toes. So now we move from beyond your perimeter. This is zone three. Unfortunately, it is still really simple for attackers to easily impersonate a brand on the internet. They don't even have to try to penetrate the perimeter or, or access the internal network. Anybody can do this. There are YouTube videos, there are blogs, there's, there's uh, written detail on how a newbie attacker can simply register a similar domain, they can host a website, a login page, they can draw customers, partners, or the public to it. Now, this could cause all sorts of reputational damage. Um, this could lead to direct and indirect financial losses, and the value that the tr uh, and trust that a brand may have taken years to build can be destroyed within seconds. Now, there is light at the end of the tunnel. This would require two things. Now, the first would be directly implementing DMARC. Now, DMARC is there to protect the, the, the domains that your organization owns. But what we need to do is combine this with proactive hunting for and takedowns of impersonated domains that you don't own. These are the domains that look similar to yours, that are being used to trick your customers and your suppliers, um, or the general public, as I mentioned. Um, however, using domains that look similar to yours. Now, we are excited that as of right now, we are able to offer integrated solutions that can quickly remediate brand impersonation attacks by the Brand Expo Protect I'm going to go through very shortly, as well as the MimeCast DMARC Analyzer. So enforcing DMARC can be a really, really lengthy process. So this is especially if you have uh, lots of sending domains because there is always a, ri a risk that you know if you do set it uh, if you do move through the process and you set your DMARC policy to reject you could be rejecting legitimate email if you don't have visibility. Um, I'm going to use UAE as an example. Uh, we are busy conducting research in Saudi, uh, but what we saw in the UAE is that 75% of the companies do not have a DMARC policy. Now, of the 25% that do. Only 60% of them are monitoring. So most companies that are monitoring, that don't have a reporting solution, are presented with reports that look like this. Now, this is gibberish. People don't read these types of reports. You're also getting hundreds of these reports every day. So it's very difficult for somebody to stay on top of it to understand, um, are we rejecting legitimate email? Um, who are these attackers that are using my domain? Um, and that type of information. So these are what we call the forensic and the aggregated reports. Uh, DMARC, um, the DMARC analyzer platform is easy to set up and use. It offers alerts, it offers reporting, it's got 360 degree visibility, um, it offers monitoring um, for unauthorized use of the domains that you own, the ones that are targeting your customers, suppliers, and employees. 
Uh, Mimecast, uh, we obviously aim to make DMOC conformance as simple as possible. So we provide a dashboard that translates the reports into a more intuitive readable format. Instead of getting something that looks like this, what you can see in your screen, you now get a dashboard that looks like this. Now, using our managed services, the goal is to get you to a reject policy as quickly as possible. This is ensuring that we are not obviously rejecting legitimate email. You have full visibility. You have a conform. Uh, your your domain is conforming with DMOC, um, and you can see uh, all those forensic and aggregated reports in a more intuitive format as well. The Mimecast brand exploit protection uh, product. This focuses on the threats that are beyond your perimeter where the visibility is low, non-existent. These are basically the domains that you don't own. These are more specifically the ones that are being used to trick your customers, your suppliers, et cetera. To give you an example, these aren't where DMARC will look at your exact domain. And that, nothing stops uh, somebody from registering a domain that looks similar to yours. And instead of using that inbound, where Mimecross already has impersonation protection to protect your company against that, this is being used externally, okay? So this could be your website, that could be scraped and cloned, this could be uh, your domain, uh, the logos, this could be social media, anything that is being used to, uh, that, to impersonate your brand externally. Now, although, okay, so what you see now is not a brand exploit protect. Now, the reason I show this is because this, we can see that this is a dog. This is not a banana. What most people think when they see a brand exploit, they'll be able to detect these attacks. They'll be able to tell you that, okay, well, you know, obviously this is a dog, this isn't a banana. Um, I, I don't need this sort of protection to be able to um, identify these types of attacks. Now, however, although this does work sometimes with more gullible people, these attacks are super sophisticated. They can look very legitimate and very intentional. You can, Look at any example, um, speak to any of these uh, these companies here, but I can guarantee that every person on this call has received an email that looks like it's come from PayPal or Netflix, Facebook, uh, Microsoft, Amazon, etc., uh, where everything looks so legitimate. Maybe it's just the domain itself instead of saying um, Google says Google. The Brand Exploit Protect focuses on early proactive detection. Now, this is specifically designed to find and stop phishing attacks right as they are born. Uh, Marn mentioned earlier um, around a cyber resilience strategy. Um, this, or everything that I've spoken to here fits into that cyber resilience strategy. We also talk about archiving and continuity, but one of the most important things is early proactive detection, being able to uh, mitigate the risk, being able to action as soon as possible, rather than waiting a couple of weeks or even a couple of days, uh, which by that time, the damage is already done. It's about reacting um, as early as possible. Now, this is specifically designed to find and stop the phishing attacks right as they are born. Now, the solution itself is made up of three elements. The first, proactive intelligence. We have quadrillions of scans. These are happening 24 seven using AI, using machine learning, to rapidly identify the use of lookalike domains that are designed to deceive and steal your data or money. The second is the threat detection agent. This is there to uncover instances where your website has been scraped and cloned and hosted on another domain. And the third and arguably the most important is the remediation. This is here to ensure that you can take effective and immediate action to stop these attacks and minimize the damage that has been uh, that that has already been caused. Uh, now the service, obviously, it's a managed service. We have uh, the Mimecast SOC, which would be, uh, ultimately be an extension of your security teams. So you can see the workflow is we would identify anything that looks similar to your domains. Uh, we will then tag it as suspicious or a live attack. You have a whole lot of other forensic information that you can go through. But on the right, you can see that you can then request a takedown where in record time, Mimecast will remove that website to that domain.
And we also offer bilateral API integrations. This is, this is um, Mimecast is working very hard on these APIs. This is uh, groundbreaking um, integrations. Uh, and the reason is because your email attack surface is so rich in data and intelligence. And if we can share that data via dashboards and APIs, we can ultimately help your IT teams and technology systems become a lot smarter. Your email security is becoming is en route to becoming the highest contributing component in your security ecosystem. Um, it's also the biggest pervasive value add, not just in the three zones that I mentioned, but across your, your entire security state. Now this slide, you can see that a lot of these are, are SIMs, they're SOARs, they're firewalls, they're endpoint securities. Mimecast has hundreds of out-of-the-box bilateral APIs. Uh, we're continuously um, uh, building these APIs. So if you whatever it is that is in your infrastructure, you have the ability to connect Mimecast to any part of the infrastructure with a bilateral API, so sharing information back and forth. This is our um, our portfolio. Um, so we can go through this on on one on one sessions, but you can see that there is a lot more that Mimecos does do, not just uh, email security. Um, but obviously, what we've done is uh, this is what we call a bento box. It's just how we know this internally. You can see on the left that we've got our three different zones. Mimecos is a SaaS platform, so anything can be purchased individually. Obviously, we do build bundles um, according to that framework, that security 3.0 framework. So you can see on the left, we have zone one, zone two, and zone three. Within zone one, you have your perimeter defense plan or the secure email gateway with targeted threat protection. Zone two is where we have the internal email protection with awareness training. And then zone three is where you find DMARC analyzer and the brand X word protect. On the right, um, we have the resilience extensions. Continuity is your high availability. This is ensuring that um, if your server goes down, Mimecast can deliver emails directly to the end user. All your security policies, all your DLP policies all stay intact. Users can still send and receive emails, uh, probably without even knowing that they're down. We have archiving. This is uh, for the sixth consecutive year, Mimecast are the leaders in enterprise information archiving uh, in Gartner's Magic Quadrant. Um, and this comes with all the bells and whistles, the e-discovery, we can ingest legacy data. You have uh, sync and recovery, you have folder replication, all of that. We have app, uh, apps, you can, uh, users can search their archive within a seven second search SLA. Okay, so, so very, very quick as well. We do web security with, uh, uh, it's a DNS gateway, browser isolation and various other things as well. All of this is wrapped around our API um, integrations. And we've also got the threat intelligence dashboard, uh, which we can obviously display that information in terms of what we send at the gateway, the information we collect in via those APIs. And this is free for all our security customers. So why Mimecast and why now? now IT and your security teams at most companies, they're overwhelmed, they're under-resourced. This slide is something that I took out of a presentation that we had after the first three months of COVID, which of uh, the pandemic, the, the lockdown. Uh, we called it the first 100 days of COVID. Um, and I, I thought this was quite interesting because these three points has been the same message that Mimecast has been talking about for, for decades. Obviously, when I started a Mimecast seven years ago, uh, um, a lot of our presentations were around uh, reducing cost, reducing complexity, and reducing risk. Now, the message is still the same, and it's probably even more pertinent now than it was back then. If we look at these three points, we, you know, we uh, focus on smaller budgets, especially now with businesses shutting down, with the lockdowns, with all of this happening, budgets have been cut across the board. Now, we are able to, to, to help by consolidating vendor costs, right? Being able to offer more from a single vendor by having a predictable subscription model. As I mentioned, it's a SaaS platform. It's a subscription platform. You have a predictable subscription model, no hidden costs. And it's also planned to design and maximize your total cost of ownership. 
We've also seen leaner teams. Um, this has always been a problem. IT has always been a very small, uh, small division. But obviously, there are so many more vendors today than there ever were. Um, and to have a, a team being able to be uh, able to handle the SIMs, the SOARs, the endpoints, the firewalls, your yeah, everything else, and they've come from all different vendors, um, becomes really, really difficult. We simplify that by offering a simple administrative experience, one adcon um, to manage most of the uh, most of your security needs. Um, obviously, being able to offer the education, accessible expertise, having a broad partner uh, base um, who are certified and able to to help, um, and then obviously the integrations and to streamline the orchestration. Talking about our API integrations, and then the greater risks. Obviously, today we've seen different risks than what we were seeing yesterday, but also the amount of threats that we've seen has, has grown significantly. Now, MIMCOS focuses on efficacy. You'll always hear us talk about efficacy. Efficacy is what translates to better security. The better the efficacy or the higher the efficacy, the better your security. And this is what, we've, with, what we always focus on, is improving that, that efficacy so we can reduce these risks. Now, MIMCOS is always addressing this email security challenge um, at, at industry scale. This is with the help of email security 3.0. We're using our core platform to help customers achieve greater security and resilience and further reduce the cost of complexity, as I mentioned. Are we building our technology with an intentional and scalable design ideology? What I mean by that is if you look at what Apple did when Apple created their iPhone, they brought together several popular but different technologies into one powerful, easy to use platform. Now we've wrapped our platform around connectors and APIs so that we can keep building and extending the scope of capabilities we offer to our customers. Now, for example, um, I mentioned the web security. This is giving you more protection, however, less to manage. Our awareness training is there to help strengthen the human firewall. And then the threat intelligence, for example, to provide um, insights into how the organization is being targeted and then what actions that they can take to ensure that their protection is optimized. Now, MIMCOS will continue to incrementally uh, build capabilities. Uh, we'll continue to integrate and continue to connect with other security investments. Now, ultimately, um, to keep things, uh, keep making things easier and more cost effective for our customers around the world. Okay. Um, and that's that's. Uh, I want to end on that note. Um, I thank you all for joining. Um, if you have any questions, there is a Q and A box. You can reach out um, to anyone on the panel as well. Um, and I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.